Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a wonderful Saturday, but uh, it uh, doesn't matter how great your Saturday has been so far, after you see this game it's gonna be like at least twice that good. Uh, it's a game from round 7 uh, of the 2018 Isle of Man chess tournament and uh, it's really uh, like uh, Tal meets Nejmeddinov game. Really uh, a wonderful uh, masterpiece and uh, well, without further ado, I'm sure you're all just going to enjoy it, so let's uh, just uh, dive straight into it. Uh, it's uh, between Pragnananda and Ravi Tesha, uh, so a grandmaster against an international master from India. Uh, Prago opens the game with e4. Uh, we have c6, the Karl Khan defense, d4, d5, and now e5, the advanced variation of the Karl Khan. And here, uh, bishop to f5. Uh, there are some players who will uh, voluntarily lose a tempo and play c5 here, which is a very sneaky Botvinnik uh, uh, system how to play this against this advanced variation of the white and it's very uncomfortable for white even though black uh, seemingly voluntarily loses a tempo uh, very very sneaky move so after e5 bishop to f5 and here we have h4 uh, the tal variation of uh, the advanced Karo Khan uh, also possible here is the immediate g4 which is the bayonet attack so if you're facing a lot of Karo Khans then you might want to uh, you know, put this into your repertoire. But the Prago goes for h4 for, uh, first. Now g4 is definitely a big threat, so uh, you have to stop it either by playing h6, uh, but uh, Ravi goes for h5 immediately. Uh, we have c4, uh, e6, and now knight to c3. Simply developing pieces, we have knight to e7, uh, and now comes knight g to e2, uh, preparing to bring this knight over to g3 to harass the bishop on f5. D captures on c4, we have knight to g3, attacking the bishop on uh, f5 and also opening up uh, an attack against this pawn. Uh, bishop back to g6 and now comes bishop to g5, pinning the knight on e7. So black is, uh, it's not all that easy to develop pieces for black, so you do have to try something. Queen to b6, simply developing a queen, uh, perhaps knight to d7 is next, perhaps even castle and queenside, but also this comes with an attack against the b2 pawn. Uh, Prago plays bishop captures on c4, and here black has to make a choice. Does he want to continue with knight to d7, or uh, does he want to stay true to his plan, as he did play queen to b6 on the previous move, so does he capture the pawn, and is the pawn perhaps poisoned? Uh, well, uh, 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 Ravi decided to capture it. Queen captures on b2, uh, and now your knight is under attack on c3. You can either defend it with... Sorry about that. Uh, it seems that this is a bit too high up. <laughs> Uh, with uh, rook to c1, or uh, as Prago played in the game, knight c to e4. Uh, we have knight to f5 now, uh, as you don't want to allow uh, something like knight to d6. Well, this knight is still here. Uh, now, knight, you don't, you, you can capture, but then the other knight is coming to e4, so it doesn't really make much sense. Knight to f5 was played, now the bishop is covering the d6 square. Uh, and here Prago can definitely play knight captures on f5, bishop captures, uh, but then after rook to b1, queen can come to a3, and the black defense. Uh, this bishop can come to b4 with check. It's a, it's a, it's an okay position to play for black. So Prago doesn't waste time. He simply castles. Uh, and here we have knight captures on g3. Prago does not recapture automatically, but rather an in-between move, uh, a nice Sushinsug, rook to b1. Now your queen is under attack. So, okay, you first have to ask yourselves, uh, can I grab the two rooks and uh, perhaps play the game this way? Not really. Uh, if you play queen captures, queen captures, and captures on f1, uh, white will not, of course, recapture. Simply queen captures on b7. Uh, and you are uh, getting checkmated here. There are so many threats here, uh, queen to c8 being one of them. Uh, so after you play something like f6, make some room for your king, also block the bishop. Uh, not even a queen captures rook, but rather queen to c8 check. King to e7, and now e captures. Pawn captures, uh, and now after bishop captures on f6, uh, king to f7, uh, queen captures on e6 will be checkmate. So uh, a very nice idea, uh, so you don't have any options of doing something like this. So queen to a3, getting the queen out of the way, uh, and now f captures on g3, opening up uh, this uh, file for the rook. Well, uh, so, uh, it's a semi-open file now. Uh, we have bishop captures on e4, and now uh, what do you play here? 
Uh, of course, you can play rook capture some d7. White will have a very nice attack, but uh, Prague doesn't waste time. Instead of this rook capture some b7, he goes for the immediate rook captures on f7. And what's the idea behind rook captures on f7? If king captures the rook, then uh, can you find the <laughs> the idea behind uh, this rook sacrifice? Uh, even feel free to pause the video and try to solve this hypothetical situation. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds for you to decide whether you want to do it. So for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent queen trapper. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the move is rook to b3. Uh, rook to b3 with the idea that if now queen captures on a2, uh, then rook captures on b7 is check, and then uh, bishop simply picks up the queen and it's all over. Uh, if you don't uh, pick up the a2 pawn, if you go here, it doesn't really matter. Rook to captures on b7 check, and the queen captures queen is next. And the only square that doesn't lose you the queen is queen to a5, uh, but still it's no better. Uh, rook captures on b7 check, king has to move, and now after bishop captures on e6, uh, you're getting checkmated. You can never go to h7 because of queen to h5, and the bishop to f7 is too big of a threat. Uh, for example, queen to a6, whatever you play doesn't really matter. Bishop to f7 check. Uh, king to h7, and now, as we've said, queen to h5 will be checkmate, or you can try uh, going down the board with the king after this bishop to f7 check, but uh, it will still lead the checkmate. So, after rook captures on f7, first queen captures on g3. Uh, here, Ravi also is now threatening checkmate on g2. Uh, Prago simply brings the rook back, rook to f2, and now uh, your b7 pawn is still under attack. We have b5. And here, bishop is under attack. If you move the bishop, it's uh, it's an okay move, but still it uh, loses you time. For example, bishop to e2, queen to a3, uh, the queen escapes, and now after rook to b3, you can go rook, queen to a4, you pin the rook, and uh, black may be still able to defend this game. Uh, so, after b5, we have queen to e1. Again, a very nice uh, move by Prago. Uh, the threat is rook captures on f8, and the queen, of course, is unguarded in g3, so you could uh, easily lose the queen here. Uh, bishop to f5, closing the f-file for the rook. So now rook captures on f8 is not a possibility, but here Prago goes bishop captures on e6. And now, again, bishop captures <laughs> would lead to rook captures, rook captures, and queen captures on g3. Again, you would lose your queen here. So after bishop captures on e6, queen captures on f2. Uh, you have to give a uh, part with your queen here. Uh, if you don't, if you try anything else, uh, like we said, if you capture the bishop, you're going to lose. Uh, playing something like g6, uh, you get to this very nice bishop to f7 check. Again, you cannot capture. Uh, if you capture, then again, rook captures on f5, captures and queen captures on g3. Uh, and after bishop to f7, if you go king to d7, uh, then rook to b3 again will trap the queen. Queen to, f queen to g4, rook to f4, and the queen has nowhere to go. So here, after bishop uh, here captures on e6, uh, Ravi decided to part with the queen. Queen captures, we have queen captures, and now bishop captures on e6. So black still has some uh, compensation for the queen material-wise, but all of his pieces are still undeveloped. So if he can get uh, his pieces out, perhaps he can still uh, pose problems for Prago. Uh, but here Prago is, uh, uh, Prago is in no reverse gear mode. Uh, he pushes d5. There is no time to waste. Uh, he wants to open up the c file. We have c captures on d5, and now an excellent move, queen to c2. Uh, pressuring the c6 square so you can't develop this knight because of this check. Uh, also, queen to c7 is coming uh, with some nasty ideas, and also queen to g6 is a possibility. If black isn't careful and tries to, for example, guard the c6 square in a different way, then queen to g6 is checkmate in one. Uh, so after this queen to c2 move, bishop to e7 is played, freeing the f8 square for the queen, uh, for the king, and also uh, trying to develop. Uh, but now comes bishop captures, king captures, and queen to c7 check. And here perhaps was Black's last good attempt with knight to d7 to defend after queen d6 check, king to f7, rook to f1 check, uh, knight to f6 would. Uh, still allow black to hold this game somewhat but most likely uh, white would win it e captures g captures you still still have uh, two rooks uh, and a bishop against a queen and the rook but white is still much better here with the, the uh, wide open uh, black king so after queen to c7 check bishop to d7 was played but now again uh, Prago uh, is in no reverse gear mode, e6. He wants to open up the e file either by king capturing, for example, king captures, then immediately you get rook to e1 check. King f7, queen to f4 check, king moves, and now this will lead the checkmate after king to f7. You can block uh, 
for one move for example here but white can simply ignore you and after here you can go queen to f5 and now a bishop has nowhere to go whatever you play simply captures and captures will lead the checkmate uh, after e6, uh, Ravi decided to play rook to c8, he attacked the queen, and now comes queen to b7. Now the bishop is attacked and also the rook on a8. Uh, you cannot uh, move the knight, if you move the knight so the rooks protect each other, then the knight is no longer guarding the bishop here. King captures on e6 was played, now comes queen captures on a8, and now knight to c6. So perhaps black can still create some sort of a castle, but it's very unlikely. Queen to b7, uh, we have b4 now, protecting the pawn with the knight, and now comes queen to a6. Uh, and here, rook captures on b4 is a threat, and th there are a lot of threats. Queen to e2 check, picking up the h5 pawn, so if white simply starts picking off pawns, he will be much better. And there's really no way to prevent this. If you move the king, either d6 or e e6 or e7, uh, white will simply pick up the other pawn, and then uh, will create... a uh, pass pawns of his own and easily win this game so king to d6 was played a rook captures on b4 as planned and now rook to d8 perhaps uh, trying to move the king and the bishop and then start pushing his own pass pawn uh, but rook to b1 we have d4 and now rook to c1 uh, with a lot of pressure against this knight uh, king to c7 was played and now after queen captures on a7 uh, raviteja decided uh, raviteja resigned the game on move 32 so uh, a brilliant, brilliant victory for uh, Pragnananda and um, really, really making your Saturday more enjoyable than it was, I hope. Uh, why did he resign? Well, everything is falling apart now. If you move the king back, for example, king to d6, then you get queen to c5 check. And now, of course, if you move back, you're going to lose this pawn. Once you lose this pawn, there's no counterplay for black. The knight is, of course, pinned. Uh, and uh, if you try something else, instead of king to c7, if you go king to e6 or something, uh, then queen captures on h5, you will lose uh, all of the pawns. And again, uh, there's really n not not much you can do. Uh, and of course, if you don't go here, if you go here, then uh, queen captures d4 immediately and black again has no counterplay. So yeah, after queen captures on a7, uh, of course, the queen cannot be captured as the knight is pinned. We already mentioned that. It's... Uh, really really an amazing game so i do hope you enjoyed it and that your saturday was uh, improved uh, i would like to thank uh, kevin wright and paolo bertiglia for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it and uh, we do have uh, the standings uh, after round seven so here are the standings uh, it's from a chess.com article i will put a link to it in the description below you can check out the entire article there is a, a lot of a lot of nice analysis to, to all of the games from round seven not all but some of the better ones uh, and uh, a lot of nice photos and everything, so feel free to check it out. Uh, Maxim Vashiro Lagrov in first place with 5.5, and, and the 7 players uh, are in top with 5.5. Uh, Maxim Vashiro Lagrov, Nakamura Hikaru, uh, Radoslav Wojtasek, uh, Wang Hao, uh, Arkady Naidish, uh, Michael Adams, uh, Xiong Jeffrey. Uh, and then with 5 points, we have a couple of super grandmasters. Le Levon Aronian, Anish Giri, Vishwanathan Anand, Alexander Grishchuk, Sergei Karyakin, uh, Seturaman, uh, Alexei Shirov, and... Uh, uh, Mirza Emilian uh, Pal uh, Par Parligras. And then with fa four and a half points, it's Vladimir Kramnik, Wesley So, uh, Richard Rapport, uh, Vidit Gujarati, and Vladislav Artemiev. So, yeah, uh, those were the standings. I do hope you enjoyed that as well. Uh, as usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon. Uh, feel free to suggest any of your favorite games from this tournament, uh, and if nothing else interesting arises, we're going to continue with the uh, Spassky Fisher series. Uh, thank you all, and I'll see you soon.